raging fire has broken out, landing the town of Jaluru in grave danger. If it jumps this track, then yes, it's a concern. In this episode, firefighters battle the blaze. While traditional owners fight to protect Kakadu's sacred land. Our land is our land. We are to protect it. Even as rangers take on a dangerous animal. In this rugged outback, Kakadu's teams continue their quest to protect the land under threat. Jabiru, 3 p.m. Watch your heads! Jump, jump back and time Fire station officer Steve Anderson and his crew are racing to control a dangerous bushfire. Strong westerly winds have caused the fire to jump the containment line. And it's now heading straight into town. We are approaching the residential area of Jabiruth. It's only about 100 metres away. Won't take much to be lapping at people's, uh, people's front doors, that's for sure. Jabiru is a small town with just over a thousand people. If the fire rages out of control, many houses could go up within the next hour. Doesn't look good at the moment. And it's about to get worse. We're out of action for Wild Tree and we're on a flat. Can you think of me, We have a flat tyre. Copy that. There you go, Train. Just go straight to the golf club. Copy that. With one vehicle down, the volunteer firefighters are left to fight the blaze on their own. You keep going along the front here, Nat. So Steve calls for backup. Can you uh, get in touch with uh, Macca and Ryan? I need him to assist us at a grass fire at the Jabiru Golf Club. Within minutes, reinforcements arrive. You know where the number four is? Where the tee off is. Okay. Go down and check that bottom line for me. Oh, let me catch your breath and I'll be right with you. Can you see where it's going to come through? Yeah, it's uh, going to hit the western boundary soon. Get over there, mate. Roger. Bloody hell. Things you don't want. Jump the containment line, then get a flat tyre. We've changed the tyre and we're on our way. Easterly winds, what we didn't want. Nice and peaceful at camp one minute, and hell breaks loose the next. All the day's work, eh? What you been doing? I'll land on the ground, change the tire. With crucial time lost, Steve must now come up with the next plan of action. Fast. Where do you go from here? We'll get the rest of our crew out first. We're limited with resources. That's we got all we got is these two two vehicles on the tanker. Steve decides to put a final burn around the perimeter, hoping this will keep the flames within the new boundary. Going out there is all gone, so I don't care. We've got a big area to burn. Start here. You guys follow up in that thing, eh? Uh, yeah, just, just head back towards the front house. The plan is we're going to put a huge, big back burn in, about three or four k long to protect the golf club and the western boundary of the township. The other side of the windmill. But the fire jumps yet another containment line. Yeah, not too bad, looks like 
crew's relief. Wind's going virtually a northerly direction, which is perfect for us. While the wind's working to our advantage, we'll make the most of it. It's all they need to get the fire under control. That far, so good. Looks like we've contained this fire. Let's just say things might have got a bit hairy for a while. Yeah, like a danger from there, eh? You guys did a sensational job. Yeah, long, hot, mongrel day. It's all over, hopefully. We can all sleep peacefully tonight. A few little hiccups on along the way, but at the end of it, nothing's getting in now. And that's it, all tied off, locked off. Very happy. Yum. <laughs> Hell yes. Go to get something to eat, drink, sit down, cool off, shower, swim, take it easy. Thanks to Steve and his team, the town of Jabiru lives to see another day. Good job, fellas. Think you guys earned yourself a beer, eh? <laughs> but the battle to protect Kakadu's land and its riches is far from over. Ranger Mine, one of the world's largest uranium mines. Generating up to 10% of the planet's total supply. The uranium from the mine is used to create nuclear power. It is a resource worth billions of dollars. But the mine faced fierce opposition from the very beginning. Ian Morris, one of the first to train indigenous rangers, recalls this unsteady period in the late 1970s. When I first started here, we had traditionally born people, um, people who were born in the bush, and then for the latter part of their lives, they had to join in with this very fast-moving Western uh, impact. And all the way through, we've had traditional owners who have not liked the idea of digging holes in the ground and upsetting the balance of the uh, the physical world, the spiritual world. For Kakadu's indigenous people, the threat is not just limited to their sacred land, but also to their family. They fear the park's water will run the risk of being contaminated and that radiation from the water will harm their children. For one ranger, it's been a personal struggle to keep his land mine-free. 20 kilometers from Ranger Mine is Kungara District, an area spanning 1,200 hectares of wilderness, also containing rich reserves of uranium. Kungara was excluded from Kakadu's boundaries in 1979 because of its potential uranium resources. Since then, traditional landowner Jeffrey Lee has been fighting a fierce campaign to incorporate the land into Kakadu National Park. The mining company that wanted to mine Kungara, uh, one of the biggest mining companies in the world, uh, what the offer was here for Gungara, huge, big money. The area is worth more than $5 billion, but for Jeffrey, the land is priceless. This area here, you know, I grew up and thing, and uh, my heart is here always. And um, it's not gonna go anywhere. And I've uh, been walking around in this area here with my family. So everything here is very special to me. You know, that money, you, you can end up anyway. You know, you, you could be a rich man, living in your country or living elsewhere. And um, it's not our way. Our land is our land. We are to protect it forever or where we stand. Finally, in March 2013, an outcome was reached. The Australian government passed a bill that lists Kungara as part of Kakadu National Park protecting it from mining forever. 
It's a sweet end to a decades-long battle. Um, I love this country. Money don't mean nothing to me. Um, country is very important. Country stay here. Money comes and go. You make money. You can't make this country back. You'll never come back the same. For Jeffrey Lee, protecting his ancestral land is a huge responsibility. Over at the East Alligator Ranger Station, another ranger has been given a smaller charge. An orphaned small mammal has been brought in, and Sam Deegan must attend to it. It's a baby northern quoll, one of Kakadu's most endangered species. We had two visitors that come in the park. They found this little guy here on his own with a bit of sand and dust in its mouth. So they brought it to the station here so we can look after it. The northern quoll used to thrive in rocky outcrops all across the park. But over the years, their numbers have dropped drastically. They are a species in decline due to too much hot fire, cane toads, people. Hopefully it does survive. Yeah. Sam is going to take care of it till it's strong enough to be released back into the wild. I've got some supplies here, syringe, a special formula for it to feed. This is my little baby for the next few months. I'm gonna probably be its mum. Makes me happy. I'd be calling her Jilly. Country is an important part of our life. We look after the environment here that we live in, and we need the animals too to live in as well. Hopefully in a few months, it could look after itself where I don't have to uh, stick a syringe down its throat to feed it. Natural instincts should kick in. These guys do need our help to look after them. They are worth saving because of the next generation. They may not know these guys. Born and raised in the park, Sam sees it as her duty to care for its native residents. Harry, look what I've got. Look what Auntie got. As a traditional owner, her relationship with the land is deeply rooted in history. Benin people, they enjoy this very much. Take the family out. Uh, they go to some places, or most places where some people can't go. Like we have the public. It's not open to the public in some areas. No, we enjoy what we're doing here. Surviving off the land in Kakadu requires a lot of knowledge. It's knowledge that the local people have accumulated over thousands of years. Today, those skills are still being passed on to the young. Teach her uh, how to fish. Sometimes she helps me get a wood, make fire, cook turtle or fish. She helps me a lot. Leave it now. <laughs> That's it's still going to take her more years to be as good as her grandmother. <laughs> Amidst all the activity, Sam makes sure her number one patient remains her top priority. I have to wake her up so she can get her feed. So tired. She's been up all night playing around. Oh, I got it. You want to be chucked? Oh, that's my turn. Boy, you will end with us. The turtle we just caught, we are going to cook it how we cook it in our indigenous way and culture. Yeah, we're going to warm him up. <laughs> Rich in protein, turtles are a favorite bush tucker. All turtles that are in this billabong in our river system, 
We ate it. We've got the pig nose turtle, long neck turtle, short neck turtle. Juice of it is very just nice and rich. 70 km away at Kale's Crossing, another crew is heading out on a risky operation. Croc expert Gary Lidner and his team are after a saltwater croc to tag. A previous operation the night before had failed after a storm forced them to abort the mission. The last night was good practice for tonight when it's calm, so you know it'd be much easier. But lucky we've gone through that rough bit last night. Spotty, first aid kit. Hopefully won't need that. Yep. Tracking a croc will help them to understand the animal's movements in the coming wet season. Now, if you spot one that we want to go for, go up and down a bit quicker, up and down, that's it. And Andrew knows there's a croc there, right? We've got firearms, we've got, um, we've got radio comms in all the cars and both the boats. Duty officer is aware of what's going on, so we've got quick response. You know, if, if uh, something goes wrong with a croc, obviously the consequences are pretty dramatic, so we've just got to think about reactions to that. Same thing, if a crocodile grabs, someone, try and secure the animal and uh, try and get him released. Okay, just go slow, Paddy, real Have slow. Water. Have enough water. Okay. Their target is a four metre male, a big threat to people. Can't have a look at this one up here, he looks like a good size. All right, let's do it. Keep it on him, keep it on him, keep it on him, keep it on him, keep it on him. Good job, Gary. Neutral? Yep, I'm neutral. Okay, neutral, Paddy, he's coming for you. Here's your next harpoon, Gary. Yeah, give me another harpoon line. There you go. Andrew. Hey. He threw it. Oh, bugger. All right. Come off. Oh, God. I got cord burn with that one, eh? The Rangers are spoilt for choice. Hey, he's gone down, head upstream, left, port. Oh, he's off here. There he is there. No, 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 no. Go around, go around, go around. Oh, he's there, he's there, he's on. He's still there? Yeah. That's quite a lot on the right. Neutral. Salties can strike and drag their prey underwater within seconds. The crew must remain vigilant. We just gotta find out where he is. There. Oh, Lucky, he's a good source. Yeah, I got him, Paddy. Okay, here, Polly, 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 Polly. I got him now, Paddy, he's right. They bring him up, Andrew. You ready? Can I go? That's right. He might be too far away, but that's right. Yeah. Got him? Yep. Cord's going out. All right. Yep. Go on. You ready? I'll hold that. You go for him. Yep. But the crew is determined to give a good fight. Yep. Pull him up higher. Yep. Hang on. Hold him there. Got it. Gary must now secure okay, the croc's it. jaws. It's a risky task. Saltwater crocodiles have the most powerful bite force Got ever it. measured. Yeah, this is the most dangerous part of the whole thing with croc capture, is actually um, securing the jaws. And you can see there's about 74 teeth there ready to go, but the tremendous bite power that goes with it, I think it's over a ton per square inch. So the main thing is to secure these shut. There's a lot of power in there. In Gary's 27 years of experience, yes. he has managed to emerge right. injury free. Yeah. What we've got to do now is hit, hit him with a, a drug. Basically, pretty well immobilized, tied up. So we'll take him back to the boat ramp. Put him up on the lawn there. Nice, easy workplace.
So our transmitter fits in there, like that. So he's a perfect size. So the transmitter's gonna tell us the story of where he's gonna move over the next 12 months. And um, it'll be sending a signal every two hours to a satellite. And then the satellite will send that signal to us. And then we can see where he's going. There's a lot of activity happening on the river. There's a lot of fighting. Everyone's getting a bit agitated. So when the rains come and the, and the rivers start flooding, then the crocodiles will sort of disperse and start feeding on floodplain fringes or just go, go venturing off into new areas looking for, for new territories, new mates and stuff like that. We'll be monitoring um, the signals. If it, if it pops up local, might come out and have a look and see where he is and see how it's going. That's it, that's That's it there. So she's ready to go. She's transmitting now and uh, tell us a story. No worries, all right. It's mission accomplished for the rangers. Over the next few months, they'll track the croc closely to collect important data. This will allow them to better manage the safety of the park. In the next episode, rangers continue their duty to maintain harmony in the park. But in this untamed environment, managing the wild is a constant struggle. And to make things worse, soaring temperatures that scorch the earth. It's hot. It can get really serious, could mean death.